thanks for checking this out and welcome back for those of you who have been here before. Today we are going to be talking about what most modern Native American style flute players uh, refer to as basic scale. Uh, it's the first thing that uh, most people learn to do on one of these flutes and the reality is if you listen to recordings of Native American flute probably 85 to 90 percent of the music you hear recorded uses just this scale. There's lots of beautiful music still to be made using just this scale. All right, quick review from last time. We want to be standing in a nice balanced aligned way. We're wanting to use our diaphragm to breathe. We have our flute nicely balanced using our thumbs and our pinkies. Our other fingers are laying naturally over the flute. Right? Let's start just blowing a couple of long tones on the fundamental of the flute, right? just to get ourselves in alignment and get the air flowing nicely through the instrument. Here we go. Let's try one more. All right. Now, on the split screen here, you'll see a little fingering diagram and uh, this is for the bottom note of the flute. It even shows you where your mouth goes. Right? You'll see that all of the holes are covered. This is simply what we call the fundamental on the flute. We're all playing flutes in A, so A, right? Uh, on this particular flute. Now, you'll also notice a number there, a number one. I'd like for you to start associating numbers with particular fingerings on the flute. Right. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with saxophones and uh, families, you know that the fingerings are the same on all the different saxophones. And it's just that different notes come out depending on which saxophone you're playing. Very much the same on modern Native American style flutes. The fingering systems are going to pretty much be the same. And the notes will simply change depending on which flute you're using. Right. For those of you who are musicians, uh, I'm playing a, a, an A flute today, so the basic scale pitches that will sound are A, C, D, E, G, and A. If I were playing on an F sharp flute, right, the same fingerings would produce F sharp, A, B, C sharp, E, and F sharp. If that means nothing to you, don't worry about it. What matters is the fingerings. All right, so we're going to call this fingering number one. Right? As we go up and get familiar with the different notes here, there will be cards to show you the fingerings uh, for one through six. Basic scale has six fingerings. Five notes, one and six for musical purposes are the same note. I think you'll probably be able to hear why we say that. If you saw the introductory video, you saw a bunch of stuff about two to one resonances and that kind of stuff. You can review that if you need to. All right, so let's try our first pattern. We're going to start with note one all the way down at the bottom of the flute. All I want you to do is to go back and forth from fingering one, here's fingering one, to fingering two, here's fingering two. Notice that the only thing that happens to get from one to the next is the bottom hole gets uncovered, right? This is uh, the ring finger on the lower hand. It's just going to come up a little bit. Watch how it works. Right. Notice I don't have to lift the finger very much to do that. Uh, one of the things that I notice when I see a, a lot of people who are just starting out with the instrument and I see them playing is their fingers will be running all over the place. Oh, I got to get that hole covered. I better get it really uncovered. 
next thing you know, your fingers are off in the stratosphere someplace and it can be a little tricky finding your way back then to get that hole covered again if you need to, especially if you have to do it quickly, right? So experiment with your flute. See how little you actually have to lift to get that next note to sound. Right? Notice also that my, my finger is going up all by itself. Nothing else is going with it. Right? I spent a lot of years as a keyboard player and I worked really hard to get my ring finger to do that. Right? Reality is that the ring finger and the little finger are connected back in here. And for a lot of people, when they lift that ring finger, the little finger is going to really want to go with it. That's fine. As long as the flute is secure, don't worry about that if that happens. All right? Okay, so let's, let's try that again. Just one, two, one fingering pattern. You can just use one sustained breath, or if you want to, you can try ta, ta, ta. If you decide to use your tongue, make sure the airstream never stops. Rather than ta, 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 go for it. ta, ta, ta. All right, let's try that one more time. Good. Now we're going to try moving from fingering two, here's fingering two, to fingering three, here's fingering three, and back again. It will sound like this. Try that with me. Now we're going to move from fingering three, here's fingering three, to fingering four. Here is fingering four. Notice that when we get to fingering four, our lower hand has uncovered all three holes now. Again, we don't want the fingers to go wandering off into space. They can stay right here, right close by. You see, I haven't, I've hardly lifted them at all, really. Three, four, three, here we go. Good, now let's get really ambitious. We're going to go all the way up from one, two, three, four, and then back down again, three, two, one. Listen to it once. that with me. Good. If you need to, hit the pause button and try that out for a while until you can get up and down from one to four, just moving from one fingering to the next, all the way up one, two, three, four, and then turn around and come back down three, two, one. Try it a couple of times and then come back. Welcome back. All right, now, you have enough notes now to actually start making your own songs. I'm going to make a, a, a little song here. It's going to have four little fr sections in it, or four little phrases. The first phrase is going to start at the bottom and move up a little bit. The next phrase is going to go all the way up to fingering four. And the next two phrases are going to be about getting back down and coming to rest again on one, All right? Here's how it might work.
we don't always have to go just straight up and down. We can skip notes along the way. We can make some notes longer, some notes shorter. Even the four little sections don't all have to be the same length. Right? We have a tremendous amount of freedom to kind of invent our own songs, even with a very, very limited amount of pitch material. Right? Let's go on. Let's see what we can do with our upper hand now. So for this entire bit, your right hand, your, I'm sorry, your lower hand is just going to be hanging out here with the fingers in a, a relaxed position with just far enough above the holes that they remain uncovered, All right? Now, we're going to start with fingering four. Here's the chart for fingering four. We're going to move to five and then back to four. Notice that four to five is not about lifting the ring finger. In basic scale, on a six hole flute, the ring finger will stay down all the time. It'll be a little tricky remembering that if you're just starting out on the flute. All right, so from fingering four to fingering five involves lifting the middle finger of your upper hand. The ring finger stays put. It'll sound like this. Try it with me. Nice. Hit pause and try a couple more times if you need to. But here's five to six and back to five. Notice that when we get to the top note of basic scale, all of the finger holes are now uncovered except for that ring finger on the upper hand. So if we're counting from the top, the third hole down is gonna stay covered. All right, here's five, six, five. Try it with me. Great. All right, now let's get really ambitious. We are going to try going all the way up basic scale. We're going to start at the bottom and just go one note to the next. And I'm not even going to show you the cards because you don't need the cards at this point. Your fingers know what to do. Right? You can watch my hand carefully if you need to. You'll be able to see your fingers move. Here we go. Bottom to top, basic scale. people find that as they go further up the scale they have to use just a little bit more air to keep the sound flowing well through the flute. So you can experiment. That's true more on some flutes than on others. Uh, I'm playing a Colin Peterson flute. His flutes tend to be really really consistent in the range so I don't have to push so much as I get to the upper part uh, of the range on, on most of Colin's flutes as I do on, on some other makers flutes. Not a criticism of anybody's flute making, it's just, you know, sometimes that's the reality of the flute. All right, let's try going the other way. We're going to start at the top and go all the way down. Here we go. We're going to start on six and then just walk all the way down. When we're first starting out, one of the big issues for a lot of people is making sure the holes get covered, right? So if you start hearing sound you're not expecting to hear, the first thing to check is make sure your fingers are just going up and down no more than they need to and are getting back down and covering that hole with the pad of the finger and getting a nice gentle seal on it. Here we go, starting at six. All right. Now, I also like to practice different mode patterns every day. Uh, today we're just using one mode and we're calling that mode basic scale. Uh, but I'm going to get a metronome going over here. All right? A metronome is just a timing device. It can keep a beat for us at different, different speeds. Uh, this particular app is called Pro Metronome and you can probably find it at the App Store for your iPhone. Uh, I don't know about other devices. I happen to, to use an iPhone. This uh, metronome is set at a speed of 68 BPM. That means it's clicking 68 times every minute, a little bit better than once per second. 
and I'm going to use it to help me pace getting up and down basic scale. Here we go. I like using the metronome for a couple of reasons. One, it helps me to pace my breath, make sure that I'm not releasing all the breath too quickly because I want to get all the way through that pattern in one breath. It also gets me used to feeling a beat physically. And feeling a beat physically is one of the most, most interesting ways to add different feelings to your music. Here's a, qu a quick demonstration, just one little phrase. Here is it uh, just freely out of time. just going to play the same phrase but let it move into this kind of feel a, a simple heart beat, beat rhythm and see how much the feel changes even though it's just the same notes so beats or not beats is a really important thing right? I also like to try different patterns with basic scale to try to get my fingers breaking out of just simply going up and down all the time. So here's a pattern that I like to call a wedge pattern, right? I'll start to one, I'll go to two, but between each neck, each of the fingerings, I'll always go back to one. So the, the fingering pattern will be one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. Get it? Here we go. going down is useful too. Right. Here's another pattern. I call it stair step. And here we skip over a, pad, uh, a fingering and then go back and fill in the space. So it'll be one, three, two, four, three, etc. The guys are mowing outside today. Just ignore it. Here we go. Stair step. works really well too. So invent your own patterns. Try these out. Make up your own patterns. Anything that kind of breaks you out of the rut of simply walking up and down in a straight scale pattern. All right. Now, for our next video, we're going to start talking about tonguing. In the meantime, uh, I'll, I very soon will be posting some games you can play uh, or that we could play together using basic scale. There'll be some imitation games like here, I'm going to play a pattern. Let's see if you can play it back to me, right? See if your ears are keeping up with your hands. Okay. Uh, also, there's some links below where you can check out some of my music. Uh, you can check out Colin Peterson's flutes if you want to. Uh, if you're wanting to kind of race ahead and go faster than I'm going in these videos or want to spend extra time working on some of these things together, uh, I do have uh, individual and group lessons available on Zoom, so we can talk about that as well. Uh, you can drop me an email at uh, my website if you'd like to talk about that. All right, thanks so much. Have a good time, and I will see you soon.